This is Mike Cariasso with a video tutorial on how to interpret a Prometheus report. Many of you may have used the first video in this series to generate your own report, but I'll begin by scrolling down and taking one of the public genomes that's being shared on Snipedia. I'll go to the user Mike's gene, and here you can see that he's been run on both DecodeMe and 23andMe. By clicking on this link, I'm going to pull up a report, which is the merged form of both of those at the beginning, what you'll notice is that we're using version 0.1.75 as generated on the uh, 19th of November 2009, and that resulted in a report with 5,216 genotypes. They're organized into various boxes. These seem to be the most interesting SNPs is the top one, and that's where we'll begin. By clicking on more, the box expands, and we can see a number of smaller boxes inside here. The first one tells us that 1.7% of the Caucasian population, or your chosen population, have the CC form of this particular SNP, RS4363657. This has the consequence of a 17x increased risk in myopathy risk when, when uh, taking a class of medicines called statins. And by clicking on more, we can learn a bit more about this. You'll notice that this text is in blue text in blue is not about your specific genotype, it's about this SNP instead. And so people with other genotypes perhaps uh, will, will also see the same text in blue. So do not get too worried about what's in blue, it isn't necessarily specific to you. Now there's a magnitude of 4 assigned to this SNP and that tells us that it's considered more or less important because the magnitude is an attempt at imposing some sort of a sorting order on this information. You'll see next is another SNP with a 28.3% frequency according to HapMap. You'll notice that again the link is here for the RS number, but in this case it's more obvious that where the RS number link takes you is not where the genotype specific link takes you. I'll click on each one of these to make that a little more concrete. Here we are looking at about a page about a particular SNP, whereas by clicking on GG we're looking at a page within Snipedia which is about the genotype instead. Now, uh, not only SNPs are in Snipedia, but also something which is a combination of multiple SNPs, and we call this a genus set. GS191 is one of these, and it has the consequence for him that uh, he will experience impaired non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug metabolism. This is a risk factor for gastrointestinal bleeding when taking any of a, a certain class of medicines, but you'll notice in particular a very common medicine called ibuprofen is in this list. By clicking on GS191, we will go to that Genoset page, and you can see a bit more of the information, including the link out to the PubMed paper, if you would like to read more, or and we really strongly would encourage you to do that, and perhaps even to put your improvements back into Snipedia. By, in fact, clicking on Edit or Edit with Form, you'd be able to expand this text and add more information and that information would then appear in your next Prometheus report as well as everyone else's Prometheus report who uh, actually had this genoset according to their data. The way that we determine that is by looking at something called the criteria. The criteria is a little computer program which lives inside of Snipedia and here we can see it's a, uh, it's a Boolean combination, meaning a combination of AND, OR, NOT, and other operators like that over the particular SNPs and alleles which were observed according to the genotype files. Coming back instead to the Prometheus report, we will leave the these seem to be the most interesting SNPs section and instead come down and look at uh, a ways of grouping related SNPs together. So we've seen before one particular SNP which relates to uh, statins and by expanding this medicines box we get a large list of medicines. I'm going to scroll down to the ones about uh, statins, and here we can see that there are four SNPs discussed in this report that are relevant to statins. The first one we see is the same one that was at the top of the report with magnitude 4, and it tells us the same information as before. But we'll see that a little lower down, uh, it mentions a second one. Here he is a, a CT heterozygote, and this also has a, a negative consequence. Um, and it was, it was in fact in the, the report above, I'll scroll up there and sort of point it out, but it was sorted a little further down, so we had to find it. Uh, the 
Prometheus report because of the grouping lets us find it a little more easily. So here is that same second SNP, but because there's so many other things that are important, it's a bit hidden. By closing the most interesting SNPs and then focusing on a particular topic such as statins, we can see all of the SNPs that are relevant for this. And this can be very important when you have one SNP which increased, which uh, would have an increased risk consequence and perhaps uh, a second SNP with a decreased risk consequence. So here for statins we see he's got two that indicate an increased risk, one that really hasn't been classified yet, and one more with a magnitude zero. We've decided that he's the normal genotype. This basic capability exists not just for individual medicines, but for the much broader class of drug metabolism. And here are a large number of genus sets and SNPs, which all have consequences on drug metabolism. I think drug metabolism is particularly important because uh, so many things that I think people think about with genetics are first diseases, but diseases often don't actually have any real uh, immediate reaction you could take except perhaps to take a medicine or some other dietary, etc. modifications in your, your lifestyle. Drug metabolism is much more about immediate things that your doctor and you will be discussing in which you can choose to make decisions and you can choose to take certain medicines or perhaps more importantly avoid certain medicines. And so drug metabolism, a really important section within your report. I'm going to close medicines and show that the same basic capability exists for various things that we consider to be medical conditions. Uh, what exactly constitutes a medical condition is sometimes a little difficult to say. Uh, for instance, here's some on, on baldness. Well, baldness is, is not so uh, unnatural, perhaps, and therefore maybe shouldn't be considered a medical condition. And for things which clearly are not medical conditions, we have this general other category of topics. And topics just let us group together other things like eye color, hair color, and, and are the same basic capabilities, but not necessarily medical or uh, otherwise uh, appropriate for the topics above. There's a tag cloud in the paid reports. Uh, this really may be going away. It may be changing. It's a very useful thumbnail snapshot of what information is discussed in your report, but it can be a bit misleading. When you see bald or baldness or perhaps the word uh, cancer, in your report, it doesn't necessarily mean that baldness or cancer is in your future. It may in fact mean that your Prometheus report is going to tell you that you have SNPs that lower your risk of these things, or it's just as possible that you've got some that are increased or decreased. But the Prometheus tag cloud does give you a quick overview of what information will be discussed in your report. Down below, we'll hit the section of these are most unique to you, but don't yet have a magnitude assigned. These are SNPs in which we have information based on HapMap to know that your particular genotype is rare, but we don't necessarily have anybody having done some reason put information into SNPedia yet to know much about it or to have assigned a magnitude. So here are two SNPs which appear to be quite rare because 0.0% of the uh, Caucasian population is reported to have them in HapMap. But if I click on this particular RS number, we'll come in and see what information is in the page. As I mentioned, not much yet. But off in this lower right corner, there is some information. First, there's a link to the GWAS study and the actual PubMed paper, which uh, first told us about this SNP. And you can read the summary. If uh, full text is available, you can often read that text. Hopefully, you'll put your own observations uh, back into Snipedia and help us to learn more about it. But we can also see that the heterozygous CT genotype here in green was observed in perhaps almost 40% of the CEU Caucasian European population. That was based on only 120 people. Given that the heterozygote form is so common, it's really quite unlikely that the CC genotype would be absolutely uh, absent within the population. It just happened to be rare enough that it didn't turn up in this particular group of 120 samples. So that gives you a feel for what's in a Prometheus report. Uh, look for the next one where I try and tell you a bit more about you can, how you can uh, put your own improvements into Snipedia and help to improve both your Prometheus report and everyone else's. Thank you very much, and we, uh, we look forward to answering your questions at info at Snipedia, or uh, by putting your content directly into the wiki pages, we'll also be happy to respond and answer your questions. Thank you.